everybody for coming. Um, as you can see, we're going to talk about some pentacontures. These are my drawings that I did for 616 uh, last semester. We're going to, I'll give you some more details about them later. Uh, I have better pictures or more larger pictures. First, let's go into pentacontures themselves. When were they used? How long were they used? Uh, when were they first adopted? Um, so, as far as the record goes, the earliest examples we have or possibilities we have of pentachondras in iconography uh, come from the Late Bronze Age, around the 11th and 12th centuries BC. This is a relief from, I believe it's near the Israeli, the, in the Levant somewhere, and it is uh, two horizontal lines with a number of vertical lines and this long vertical line that appears to be a mast. So this has been interpreted as uh, a ship, which is kind of hard to see. And these lines, there's about 20 of them, and so that's kind of a rough estimation. But there are a couple better examples that we see from the Mycenaeans. Here we have a what's definitely a ship. We see our mast, um, running lines, and rigging. And we have these vertical lines above a large thick lower line, and then this upper weird design, which I'll talk a bit more about later. Um, and what we see, or what this is presumed to be, is actually the chests of rowers. And if that's the case, we've got about 20. And the assumption is, is that these guys, these artists, weren't able to draw all 25 um, individuals in their ships. Um, so here we see what is likely a pentacontor with about 19 vertical uh, lines and chests. This is a better example uh, of this situation. We have 24 lines above our lower saw line or upper horizontal. We have our sail, uh, our quarter rudder right here. And so the 24 with the 25 rooms would be a perfect example of a pentacontor with their 25 rowers on a single side. The question is whether or not these are stanchions or thwarts, and whichever the case, if they're thwarts or stanchions, it would still indicate that we're looking at 25 people sitting uh, in this boat. So the evidence, as far as iconography goes, suggests that pentaconters show up somewhere between the 12th and 11th century, perhaps uh, as early as the 14th century BC, but this is the best evidence we have. It, it, dates to about that period. Another, uh, the only literary piece of example we have from this period comes in the forms of what's called the Pylos Rowers Tablets. And in these, uh, these tablets, which are written uh, in the Mycenaean language, uh, or written language, we see and it describes the drafting of 600 individual rowers. And they're described as rowers in the description from the tablets. Now, it doesn't talk about what sort of ships they would have been on, but with 600 individuals, that's 12 pentaconters, uh, 50 rowers each, or uh, I believe it's 20 uh, triconters. Either way, we're looking at a large number of ships. It's not likely for smaller ships with 10 rowers or so. So it, it suggests that the Mycenaeans were definitely using uh, larger ships, pentaconters, triconters, and goes hand in hand with the iconography. So later on, by the 9th and 8th centuries BC, we get iconography that almost certainly depicts pentaconters. Uh, this is from actually the earliest 7th century, so it's, it's a little bit after this. But you can tell by this period, uh, we're looking at rather nicely designed ships. And these probably are similar to what we would have seen in the 8th and 9th centuries BC. They have a single level of rowers. Uh, these, both these ships are depicted with about 22 rowers which as Kasson also suggests, and I mentioned earlier, is probably representing a pentaconter because we have no evidence of ships being rowed by uh, 42 or 46 rowers. 50 rowers was the standard. Um, more to the 8th and 9th centuries, we have this interesting depiction. And anyone who's taken uh, Jamal's 615 class has seen this. And the big debate is, are these two rows uh, superimposed or are they across the ship? And while I'm not certain 
I would suggest that they're superimposed, which would mean this ship would be rowed by 100 individuals. It'd be a double pentaconter in a sense. But we definitely see a large number, uh, again, about 20 rowers on a side here, suggesting that, uh, or showing our pentaconters and our large ships. And here we have another 20 rowers or so. And there are a lot of examples of our 25 rowers on a side from any period. So we have to assume, because we know that they were using these pentaconters by this period, that these large numbers of rowers in a ship does suggest a pentaconter. That's definitely more than trireme. Uh, so it couldn't be that smaller ship. And again, we have no evidence of a quadriconter, which I just made up, but 40 rowers <laughs> in a ship. In the 7th and 6th centuries BC, we finally get some literary evidence. Um, we have Homer, we have Herodotus, we have Thyusides. There's a couple other individuals, but these are the big ones. Uh, Homer talks about specifically, and he's describing uh, events from centuries before him, but he's probably taking the evidence from his own period. He talks about ships with 50 men in them, ships with 100 men in them, which may represent our bireme, our superimposed sets of uh, rowers for a pentaconter. So by the 7th century, and this is the early 7th century, we definitely know that these ships are occurring in the actual literary evidence. Um, so when we see them in the iconography, uh, here we have what appears to be a bireme pentaconter with a series of oar ports on the bottom and then oars coming out of both the top and the bottom. And there's 25 here. so. It looks like pentaconters actually may have been shortened by this period and um, allowing them to be more stable and still carry this similar amount of power that we would have had earlier on. Herodotus in the 6th century describes also, event, also describes events with pentaconters. So he talks about uh, the Battle of Alalia. He talks about pentaconters being in the Persian fleet as transport uh, vessels. And Thyusides. Uh, he interpreted, interprets Homer's evidence for uh, the Mycenaeans and just after. So he talks about these events and Pentecontras as well. And as we saw in this piece of iconography, uh, similar again here, we see 25 oars uh, on two different levels. So it seems that by the 7th and 6th century, uh, our, we're seeing superimposed Pentecontras showing up quite often. And we probably also would have gotten these single road pentaconters, and I'll show you some examples of those later on. So ultimately, pentaconters show up somewhere around the 12th century. They go till about the 6th century when they are replaced by triremes. Now that we, I took the time to establish when and how these ships were used, how were they made? That's a big question that we can't answer at this point. Uh, in detail because we don't have any physical examples of these warships. Um, and perhaps the construction of these ships changed over time. So dealing with the earliest examples, we have this piece of 14th century iconography, and then we have these 12th century models from Cyprus, and this is uh, an 11th century model from Cyprus as well. <coughs> We don't have many descriptions, or we have no descriptions of how these ships were made, and we don't have any examples from this period aside from Geladonia and Ulibrum. Those ships were made with um, the mortise and tenon, tenon construction that has become famous at this point. However, those were of Syrian make, came from the Levant, uh, as far as all the evidence suggests, and we're looking, I was specifically looking at Greek ships, so was the construction different? And what we see here is a lot of jagged or di uh, diagonally spaced lines, kind of zigzags. You see that on the stem post here, all along the uh, body here. And there's a little bit kind of in here, and up here we see interesting lines. And this seems to suggest that these ships are constructed using the lace con tetrahedral, or at least some sort of lace construction, during the Mycenaean period. There's no evidence of this. Again, this is all conjecture, but that, that's the best evidence I can come up with. 